What's going on everybody and welcome to a new updated Python 3 basics series. I'm not really the biggest fan of the basics series that I've done in the past because it's not really what I suggest you go through in the basics if you're really just getting started and you actually want to learn Python. I think the way that you really want to learn it is you want to deal with the basics as little as possible and you know learn the things that you really need to know and then just jump into actual projects that you personally find interesting. The basics are boring. So my hope here is to more quickly run through the basics and get you to the point where I actually think you should stop with the basics. So on my old basics tutorial series, I kept telling people, hey, go to like part 13 out of 50 and, uh, and stop there and start working on things that interest you. So with Python, you can do a million different things. You can make websites, you can do self-driving car stuff and machine learning and um, you know do robotics and make GUIs and just all kinds of stuff. And so you don't want to, you don't need to spend time in the basics to learn the language. And the best thing you can do is just start working on projects. So the purpose of this tutorial is going to be focused more so on someone who is brand new to programming. So someone who heard GUI and probably has no idea what the heck I was talking about. So graphical user interface. Um, I think that, you know, too often we just kind of run through the syntax of a programming language and we're not actually learning how to program, but also we're just kind of checking off boxes. And that's not really the way you learn to program. So I just want to show you guys what you need and then you can get off and do whatever the heck you want to do uh, from there. So uh, just to give you sort of an idea of what all you can do, if you go to Python Programming.net, you can see a bunch of options here. You can do data analysis and robotics and web development, and make various different types of bots. So in this case, we've got the bot that plays GTA, but also like Reddit bots and Discord bots, chat bots, um, all kinds of, you know, competitive bots that, you know, compete each against each other in games and, and so on. There's just an endless number of things that you can do in Python. So um, that's kind of what I suggest. So let's get through the basics first. Also, I think if you want to learn to program well, you have to kind of have, have three things. You need to know, you know, what programming actually is. Um, you need to have a, a tool set to some degree. So learning like syntax and stuff like that is kind of your tool set. And then you need to know how to put those things together and actually use your tools. Uh, but if you want to actually start making stuff in Python, you don't need a big tool set. So it's kind of like if you want to start working on cars, you know, you're not going to go and spend twenty or thirty thousand dollars on a bunch of tools and the biggest tool chest that you can find and like a lift for your car. You don't need to do that. You just need to spend. You know, you need a few basic tools, and that's it. And the same thing is true with programming. You you really don't need to know that much to start producing some pretty incredible things. And uh, those basic things are like if statements, functions. Uh, for and while loops, but arguably you could get away with like just using a while loop, <laughs> right? Like you can do a whole lot of things and you can pretty much do anything uh, with like five basic principles. So anyways, um, the other thing that I just want to bring up before we get too deep into Python is comparing Python to other languages. So, uh, you know, should you learn Python or should you learn C or Java or JavaScript or like all these other million languages? Uh, I personally am a big fan of Python just because of the, the the rapid way you can develop things. Like you can make stuff in Python unbelievably fast. Um, and usually the only downside you might hear about Python is, uh, you know, one, it's it's a beginner's language. Well, I, I mean, I guess it is a beginner's language, but you can do anything in Python that other people are doing in any other language. So I wouldn't let them tell you that, you know, you can't do certain things. Like I, I do contracting and consulting work and I frequently get tried to, or I frequently get attempted to be hired. Anyway, I frequently have hiring attempts on me to, <laughs> to do like machine learning stuff and, you know, or like artificial intelligence stuff and like web development, data analysis, this kind of stuff. Like huge companies are using Python. So to call it a beginner's only language or something is, is, uh, is pretty silly. Also, people call Python slow. This is true and false at the same time. Native Python is indeed very slow. Um, and uh, but Python in practice is not slow. Uh, Python in practice, you're using things like NumPy and like other packages that you'll find as you uh, progress in Python that are actually just like Python wrappers around 
you guessed it, C or C++ code. So it's actually very fast and it's, it's gonna be faster than any C or C++ that you or I or 99.99% .99 of us would ever write. So um, anyway, Python in practice is also very fast. In my opinion, it is the best language uh, you could possibly learn. So anyways, let's get into it. I know some people are going to say, oh, you spent too long blabbing on. Um, and my argument to that is if you didn't, if that information was unuseful to you, um, I strongly suggest you just go to like, you could go to the documentation and go to like Python three docs. Um, and then just go to the tutorial here. Uh, and this just runs through all the things. Like, so if you just want to just jump into Python, maybe you already know a language or whatever, come here, go through this tutorial here because chances are you can just zoom through it. Like if that's what you really want to do, go for it. So uh, check that out. And also, even if you want to continue with the video series, um, save that. You, you should come back to this from time to time. Like sometimes I'll go through here and I'll like relook at this stuff and there'll be stuff that like I totally forgot existed. Like I'll learn new things and stuff like that. So um, definitely don't forget that this exists. Like the, the Python's you know, core website and their documentation is pretty darn good. So uh, don't don't forget about it. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get Python. I thought I hit back, but I guess I didn't. So um, so let's go to downloads and you could hit 3.7 right here. So yes, I'm on a Windows machine. A lot of people will be like, ah, why not Linux? Um, it just doesn't matter. Use whatever operating system you want to use. It just does not matter. So um, yes, I'm on Windows. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look, I'm on a 64-bit version of Windows. I believe the default gives you 32-bit, which uh, I wish it didn't uh, because you're with 32-bit, you're limited to two gigabytes of RAM, which is kind of silly. <clears throat> now why, let's see, maybe I'll click 371 here. Uh, scroll down, right. So I want the you know AMD 64 executable installer. Obviously, if you're on a 32-bit version of Windows, go ahead and get that one. <laughs> but if you have 64-bit, go ahead and keep using 64-bit. Um, also, Python on Windows is just traditionally one of the more difficult ones to get around certain errors. So it'll be a little more useful for me to show people um, how to get around them. So uh, install launcher. We'll go ahead and also check this box to add Python to your path. Uh, and then you could customize the installation, but I'm just gonna go ahead and install it now and that's fine. So we'll wait for that. And then when we're done, once you have the programming language, you need something that's called like an IDE. It's an uh, interactive development environment, basically. Uh, actually, the I is for integrated. Um, and this is just where you write your code. So this is your, your interpreter sometimes, or usually it, it kind of doubles as a place for you to write your code, then also interpret the code and run it and all that. Um, you can use either the one that comes with uh, Python, which is idle, it's just I-D-L-E. Uh, I used to use that a lot. I'm a big fan of very simple editors. Um, I'm also gonna disable this path length limit here. Um, I really like simple editors. I like uh, that they don't give you much of a crutch. Uh, the, my problem with idle is it crashes sometimes, like especially if you do like a bulk, like edit undo or something, and then it crashes. It didn't auto save and you lost all your work. Also, it doesn't have a dark theme. I do prefer now, especially to work with like darker themes. So at least to my knowledge, I, I actually, I think at some point it actually did get a dark theme. Anyway, I eventually switched to Sublime Text. So I'm also going to grab Sublime Text uh, and I want Sublime Text 3. Um, at some point, I do actually have a license for Sublime Text. You don't need a license. You can continue to use it forever for free. Um, so I'm gonna grab Windows 64 bit here and grab Sublime Text. And I'll show you guys how you can set up Sublime Text. Um, it's, it's super simple. We just have to pick what, you know, what with what do we want to run our scripts because you can use Sublime Text to write all, you know, basically any language. So I'll hit yes here. Next. Uh, install. I'll hit finish there. I'm surprised it didn't throw anything on my desktop. Let's see if we, there, Sublime Text 3. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it down here. Oh, you're not gonna let me do that. Huh, I, 
I should be able to add it there. <laughs> I'll figure that out later. Anyways, so this is like our editor. And we can write pretty much whatever we wanted in here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go quickly to File, Save As. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop because that's where we're going to work for now. And I'm going to call this uh, pi3tutorial.py. And I'll try to remember it in the future, but as you progress in Python, never name your Python program the same thing as like what you're ever going to import, any package you intend to use and all that. Probably doesn't mean much to you right now, but good to keep that in mind immediately. So we'll go ahead and hit save there. So now at least Sublime Text knows it's a Python file. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hold control and roll my mouse wheel so it makes it nice and big for the, uh, so it's easy to see on the video. And then we're just going to do one of the most basic things in Python, and that is a print. So print, and this is what's used typically for debugging purposes. So as you're running your, your program, it's just going to output to the little console um, a bit of information, whatever you ask it to. So for now, we'll use a string. So a string is just encased by quotes like this. So it can either be uh, like double quotes or you could encase it in single quotes. You could even get pretty fancy and encase it in triple quotes. <laughs> So uh, anyway, more on triple quotes later. But for now, let's just print uh, hello universe. Everybody likes to say hello world. Um, I'll prefer the universe. So now to run, generally you'll do control plus B, but it's gonna wanna know what do you wanna run it with initially. And we're gonna run it with uh, Python here. So I'm just gonna choose Python. And then you can see down here the output. And so it just says hello universe. So that is our very first Python program. Super, super basic, but from here, what we're gonna do is get into uh, some of the more uh, you know, basic principles and tools that you'll need to actually write programs that are gonna actually do things for you. Uh, back whenever I first started to learn to program, I thought all programs were these graphical user interfaces, and I thought I, I was always waiting for the moment for the like the thing to pop up, and it was going to be a, a window and stuff. <laughs> I, I never really realized that actually most programs just kind of operate in the background. You don't really see them doing anything; they're just kind of running, but you don't see them running. So, anyways, that was always kind of weird to me when I first started to learn. So, if you guys have any questions or comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Also, I have a quick shout out to my most recent channel members, uh, Alfonso, Papasani, C. Hayes, and Scott Davis. Thank you guys very much for your support. If you don't know uh, what channel members, uh, channel membership is, you can click that like blue join button there. And it's just a way to support the creator. Uh, you get access to videos early among some other things like uh, chat emotes and like a little badge next to your name and stuff. Basically, it's, it's more so a way just to support the creator. So if you want to do that, um, that is how. Anyway, that's all for now. In the next tutorial, we're going to be getting a little deeper into uh, some more cool kind of logical things uh, with programming. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys in the next video.